Good morning, Church Folk Revolution, PimpPreacher.com. It's your boy, TJ. Uh, another video, another video. Uh, it is our birthday today. Uh, five years old. Five years old. PimpPreacher.com. PimpPreacher.com. We're, yep, we're five years old. Uh, started this day, 2010. Right? And it's interesting. It's interesting that we started 2010 and the biggest story then was Bishop Eddie Long, right? And five years later, here I go, I come back to you five years later. And for us, it may not be for the entire world. It may not be for the entire church world, right? But for me personally, the biggest story I can think of and, and cause to get involved in is uh, this fight at, at, at Union Grove Baptist Church, Right? in Elberton, Georgia. This is a story we, we, we brought to you uh, about two weeks ago about uh, Reverend Tim Maddox and how he and a, a couple of his cult members, right, decide that they want to send uh, Mother Janora Biggs, 103 years old, uh, a certified letter banning her from coming to church, right? And... You know, you know, the story went viral. You know, for those of you who follow the site, you know what happened. If not, go to pimpreacher.com and, and search it. You know, we got a hold of the story. I was outraged as normal. And you guys know how I am once I get my teeth into one of these stories. Well, yesterday I find out that the same pastor, Reverend Tim Maddox, filed a restraining order uh, against some of the members of Union Grove. Um, in particular, in particular um, the grandson who drives Mother Biggs to church. See, we voted him out. I was there. We voted him out. The congregation stood up and voted him out, right, for the second time. It's the second time this guy has been voted out, okay? First time was in 2009, but he just, he just, he just ignored that vote. And here's, this is the second time this dude's been voted out, right? I was there. I witnessed it with my own eyes. saw it. I was there, right? Got got video of it. We was voted out. So, in a desperate attempt to remain pastor of Union Grove Baptist Church, Tim Maddox has taken out restraining orders, right? Restraining orders. One on Brother Elliot, Mother Big's grandson, who drives her to church. So, so they didn't want to file it on Mother Biggs, right? Now, I, I, I'm not going to say they wouldn't. They, they didn't want to do it because Tim Maddox is evil enough to do it, right? It's probably, you know, they, they realize, you know, they, they got a, they got, they, they just have a teaspoon of common sense, just a teaspoon enough to realize that we probably wouldn't want to want to put the restraining order on Mother Big. So let's put it on her grandson, who pretty much has absolutely nothing to do with this, other than the fact that he drives her to church. So to keep the grandmother away from the church, they Reverend Reverend Tim Maddox and Glenn James, his appointed deacon, right? His appointed deacon, because the church didn't vote for him as deacon. He just got rid of all of the other deacons and said, hey, you, come here. You look like a flunky. Come here. You flunky enough for us. You're going to be my deacon. And appointed this guy, Glenn James. That's the guy, if you go to Pim Preacher, he's the guy in the suit, right, in between the two cops. Appointed this guy deacon, right? And these two individuals, Reverend Tim Maddox and James Glenn, his deacon, flunky, have filed a restraining order on the grandson of Mother Brig, Big, Mother Biggs, who simply drives her to church, and Shirley Robertson, right? Shirley Robertson. Shirley Robertson, they, uh, Reverend Maddox says, he, he is fearful for his life. And James Glenn, right? They, they uh, Glenn James, Glenn James, I think his name is. 
They're fearful, fearful for their lives. This woman is 69 years old, right? She might be 100 pounds. Might. I'm giving her some pounds, right? She's so thin, I can put her up on my hip like one of my daughters and walk around the house with her. And this, this woman, this woman's really, guys, this woman, I'm, I'm, I'm seated in a chair. This woman is really about right here, <laughs> okay? And they say that they're fearful, fearful for their lives because she brought some dudes to the church to have her rem them removed, right? Well, I'm I'm the dude. <laughs> I'm the dude. But she didn't bring us to the back office. I walked back there myself. We have it on video because Shirley Robinson couldn't even get that close to the pastor because of his. His female bodyguards that protect him would not allow anybody to get close to the pastor, right? So they 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 charged this woman with bringing people there. She didn't bring me there. I went there on my own. I appeared on my own. I showed up on my own. The church is easy to find. The church. Not only did I show up on my own, I joined the church. I'm heading back there, right? That's my church home now. As much as I dislike church. Right, but to support these people, I joined church because I I gotta I have to get in the middle. Of, I gotta get deep in this one as I possibly can, right? Because what we're dealing with here with Tim Maddox is pure evil. Okay, what you have in Tim Maddox is you have a man who is basically was broke when he showed up when he got elected as pastor. The members told me he wore the same gray dusty suit every week. So what this guy has been able to do off the backs of retired people is make a come up financially, right? And so, you know, it's five years later, Pim Preacher's still been doing the same thing. And people, you know, you guys wonder why I'm so intense, why, why I'm, I'm on these preachers like that. It's because of guys like Tim Maddox. You know, and it's disgusting to me because with all of the with all of the preachers that call themselves good pastors, with all of the men out there who call themselves good pastors, here you have a wolf at Union Grove Baptist Church. And we can't even get the ones, the pastors, the pastors who call themselves good pastors. We can't even get the good pastors to address a bad pastor. Even when that bad pastor is abusing elderly women. You know, I I thank God for the previous generation. I, I do. I thank God for the previous generation. Because if the civil rights movement was up to this current group of pastors, listen to me. If the civil rights movement was contingent upon the courage, bravery, compassion, and care. Right, concern of these current pastors, then there wouldn't be a civil rights bill. There just simply wouldn't be one, right? There will still have segregated schools as the law, okay? Not, not situational options, but as the law, because we're dealing with a group of pastors. Five years later, pimpreacher.com, we still are faced with a group of pastors. That as long as this incident isn't taking place at their church and as long as they have been able to convince their members that they are a good pastor, they could care less. They couldn't care less. They, they, what's happening in these other churches is of no concern to them. And it's probably why the situation with, with Mother Biggs and what's happening to Shirley Robinson is probably my last time ever getting involved in any of these situations. It's been five years. I've been doing this for five years. This is probably the last time I'll show up at any church. I'm going to stay with this congregation until they can get their church back. But I've just come to the reality that I am dealing with a group of Christians. I am in a generation of a group of Christians that they don't, you know, you guys don't care about these people, man. You guys don't. This group of Christians, this generation that I am, that I am in, when it comes down to it, right, it, it, all they're willing to do is just like and share on Facebook. That's it. But when you challenge them to get involved and help and help 
you know, d deal with some of these situations, then they much rather, you know, watch us do it, you know, as if we do this for church entertainment or a church reality TV. No, we do this so you can see, so you can see what's happening to your grandmothers, what's happening to your grandmothers, what these preachers are doing to your grandmothers in these churches. It's enough. You should be concerned about this. It shouldn't take this website and this organization to say, hey, these preachers are abusing your grandmothers and your mothers in these churches. This predatory, this predatory tithing, which has these pastors on a, wel a welfare system. So now you have a grandmother who is on fixed income, taking care, financially supporting a full grown ass man while all of you just act like you know it's not happening and then if, and if it if it wasn't for mother biggs and shirley robinson taking a stand against this pastor we still wouldn't know what's going on in these churches so i'm gonna stay involved with them i'm not gonna leave them right taking my own money to lawyer up to help these people but every one of you looking at this video, man, not doing this for your entertainment, okay? Not doing this for your entertainment. Stop calling yourself a Christian. Stop it. Stop calling yourself a believer. Because Christ, the person you claim to follow, was an activist. It was an activist. It wasn't a situation that Christ rolled up on that he just simply said, I'm going to pray for you. It wasn't a sick person that Christ rolled up on. That he simply said, I, I'm going to believe God that that's going to work out for you. And I, I just hope I, you, you just got to have, you know, just got to keep on believing in, and going about his business. Everybody that Christ came encountered with tried to do something to change their lives. So stop calling yourself a follower of Christ. If you are not getting active and involved, if you don't have your own your own movement, you don't have to be a part of PimPreacher.com. You don't have to be a part of Church Folk Revolution. But if you don't have your own revolution going on, if you don't have your own movement inside of you that lasts longer than Trayvon Martin and lasts longer than Freddie Gray, lasts longer than... If you don't have anything that's inside of you that you're passionate about as it relates to the believer that sits next to you on the pew, stop calling yourself a follower of Christ. You're a spectator. You're a spectator. You're a Facebook Christian. Just simply go ahead on and click like while we figure out a way to help these people in real time. This is probably my last time. This is five years later. I'm not, you know, I I can't get no help here. And, you know, I'm not going to, you know, have the lights cut off in my house trying to care for the entire world when I have a church on every corner. There's a church on every corner here in New Orleans. There's a church. I was in I was in Elberton, Georgia this week, and there was there were churches in the same block. This is a little bitty town. No more than 5,000 people in it, and there's two churches in the same block. And we can't get one pastor in Elberton to stand up. It's one of the most corrupt little small towns you ever want to see. But it's a typical small town. But these people should not be left alone to fight a pimp pastor, his deacon, his cousin on the police department. They friend that's a judge. I called the lawyer to try to get help in Elberton only to find out that this guy probably shared that information with all of these individuals involved. So now I have to get attorneys out of Atlanta to help these people in Elberton while you guys sit and, and, and just... Take it in as entertainment. Shame on you. Stop calling yourself a Christian. Happy birthday, pimpreacher.com. It's probably our last, this is probably our last battle. This is this is probably the last battle right here. And if it is the last battle, then I I if, if I die, I'll go to jail to make sure that this pastor does not does not abuse Mother Biggs and Mother Shirley Robinson. It's your boy TJ, Church Folk Revolution, pimpreacher.com.